The boomerang, often confused for a strange looking stick that somehow comes back, is actually an aircraft the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation produced as its latest military fighter. And despite its small appearance, the end result was an aircraft that was designed and manufactured and put into service in under nine months, making the boomerang the first fully combat ready aircraft to be designed and manufactured in Australia. The Japanese expansion into the South Pacific and Southeast Asia in 1941 certainly put Australia in a bit of a tight spot. With war going on in Europe and now a massive threat from Japan, Australia would desperately need an aircraft industry of its own. It therefore considered to be prudent to build up an indigenous aeronautic industry to both build the aircraft under license and to develop homegrown designs. Should the fears of not being able to obtain aircraft from defence come to pass, this proved wise. Australia only having started the aviation industry merely a decade before the outbreak of war, Japan's sudden expansion into the Pacific in late 1941 and conquest of Asia made sure that Australia saw itself effectively on the front line. Australia was already producing aircraft locally, the Bristol Beaufort, a twin-engine multi-role bomber built under licence, and the Wiraway, a licensed but heavily modified version of the North American T-6 Texan, which for all intensive purposes was a single-seat trainer and light ground attack aircraft. To that end, with no locally produced or imported fighters to defend Australia, the general manager of the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, Lawrence Wackett, began examining the possibility of designing and building a new domestically designed fighter. The main challenge to this ambition was that fighter aircraft have never been manufactured in Australia, so the general manager tasked Fred David to design one. David, an Austrian refugee who'd been detained by the government for being an enemy alien, earned himself a pardon as he had valuable experience working with Heinkel in pre-war Germany, Mitsubishi and Aichi in Japan. The design work for the boomerang began on December 21st, 1941, with the design requirements being based around maneuverability and firepower. It was to use parts originally from CAC's trainer aircraft, the Wiraway, specifically the wings, tail, assembly, undercarriage and centre sections. The power plant was to be from the Australian-built Beaufort bomber, well, with one massive Pratt & Whitney R1830 Twin Wasp 14-cylinder air-cooled radial delivering 1,200 horsepower. In combination with a new Ford fuselage specifically designed to fit the large modified bomber engine, it had a single-seat cockpit complete with a sliding hood canopy, and the armament on the aircraft was very impressive, boasting four 303 or 7.7mm machine guns, along with two 20mm Hispano Mark II cannons. The acquisition of the Hispano cannons is a pretty interesting story. It was reverse engineered and manufactured from a British Hispano that an Aussie airman brought back as a souvenir from the Middle East. As, well, Australia was unable to acquire equipment from other countries, getting a cannon from the Middle East from a crash Spitfire was certainly an interesting debacle. But by this time, the boomerang was in production and units were being delivered to the RAAF. The aircraft, well, were being produced out of Fisherman's Bend in Melbourne, which was the headquarters for CAC. And subsequently, the government decided to put in an order for 250 aircraft. The boomerang was built as a mid-level, high-level fighter with a two-stage turbo turbine, but it was overlaid with weight for its wing area, and whilst it was quite manoeuvrable, agile and nimble, it didn't perform well at high altitude. In one case, Betty Bombers came over at 23,000 feet, and the boomerangs went to go intercept. The issue was the engine performance, and really, the boomerang could only get to about 20,000 feet. So, the Japanese bombers flew past quite undisturbed. The aircraft had proved its troubles as a fighter on multiple accounts, suggesting that the boomerang, despite being agile, was not necessarily a match for the Zero. Several of them ended up getting quite badly damaged by enemy fire. Despite this though, the boomerang never saw an aerial victory or a kill, and the RAAF decided it needed to be used elsewhere, and was given to the Army Co-op Squadrons where it performed excellently as a close air support aircraft. CAC wanted to improve the design, so as production was continuing, they made modifications to the aircraft to help increase its effectiveness. Grouped together under three major designations, CA-12, CA-13, and CA-19. The CA-12 was the first initial batch of 105 airframes that were ordered. However, the RAAF, not quite happy with this, ordered some more, and thus became the CA-13, which had a porcupine flame dampening exhaust and a wooden, rather than aluminium, wing tips. From the CA-13 came the CA-14, a one-off experimental prototype aircraft to become a high-altitude boomerang version incorporating a turbocharger which was borrowed from a B-17. The prototype also features a streamlined airframe, a square horizontal and vertical stabiliser and tail section, 
and it also had a heap of overheating problems. So it was decided to install a cooling fan, but the aircraft was found to be neutral stable and the lateral plane, but directionally unstable. And while lateral stability was improved by sweeping the wings, attempts then were made to obtain a four bladed propeller to increase climb performance but this did not become available. The aircraft was then handed over to the RAAF for evaluation, by which time it had flown to over 41,000 feet or 12,000 meters. Further development led to the CA-14A, the same aircraft being modified to house a number of modifications, including a four-speed propeller. It would have been, at least on paper, an all-round performance better than the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt and the Supermarine Spitfire 5C. This conversion work was carried out in June and July 1943, but by this time the defence of Australia and New Zealand became less important as more American and British designs were becoming readily available. As such, the high-altitude version of the Boomerang was cancelled despite an initial order of 200 units to become available before production commenced at the CA-17 Mustang the licensed variant of the North American fighter. The last major production boomerang is the CA-19, using parts and improvements from the CA-14A program with the R2000 engine. It was recommended to the Australian War Cabinet and they only approved 50 under the CA-19 contract. These were eventually completed with the R1830 engine with a Hamilton standard propeller. No four-blade propellers became available. And whilst improvements on the tooling, production, and the efficiency of the aircraft were improved, the Boomerang was a minor success as a fighter, while proving itself capable at close air support. Only a total of 250 Boomerangs were produced, and from the time of official approval by the government to proceed with the Boomerang's production, to the time of its first official flight was little over 16 weeks. A remarkable achievement by world standards, and an impressive feat of engineering to say that the Boomerang, well, it might never ever come back. Subscribe for more.